money. Let can we settle down? We are doing lesson lesson ten today. Lesson ten. Father, in the name of Jesus, even as we go into your word, Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will minister to us in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. Give us an encounter by your word in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come and have your way, O Lord. Let the hearts of the people be settled, O Lord, even to receive from you this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, redemption package. Four minutes is gone already. Um... Memory verse, Psalm 49, verse 20. It says, Man. Okay, even before we go, uh, can someone give us a recap of what we had last Sunday? Last Sunday. What did we have last Sunday? Are you born again? In summary, can somebody give a summary of what, what you gained from it last Sunday? What you gained from it? Okay. See, now becoming a saint for Christ. Anybody can become a saint for Christ, no matter how your past was. Thank you very much. So we'll just go straight to that of today. Redemption package. Um, our memory verse is taken from Psalm 49, verse 20. If you have your manual, can we read it together? Psalm 49, verse 20 is there on the manual. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. Amen. <clears throat> so, that is, that is what um, our memory verse is. Man that is in honor. So, it's one thing to be in honor. It's another thing to even understand that you are in honor. Because if you are in honor and you don't understand it, then you will not even benefit from that honor. So, that's the summary of what the Bible is saying. The man that is in honor and understand not is like the beast that perish. So, our Bible passage taken, can someone read from, for us? Take John, verse 2 to 4. Take John, verse 2 to Walk in truth. Amen. Thank you very much, Daddy. So, um, so we've heard what the Bible portion says there. So, he's saying that I wish above all things. So, you know, the apostle was talking about a man who was already walking in truth. But he was trying to explain what the apostle was trying to say to him there was. He was trying to tell him that there are more things beyond just walking in truth. He was trying to expose him to the benefits of walking in truth. He said, I rejoice that you walk in truth. Maybe he noticed that even as he's walking in truth, there are some, there are some benefit that comes with walking in truth that he was not enjoying. So he came, he, he wrote to expose him to it. That's why you, if you, can, can you read that portion again? If you hear what he said, the way he started that portion, he said, I pray, I wish, my wish is above all things that you may yes prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospereth, he acknowledges that your soul is prospering. He acknowledges that they have told me you're walking in truth. However, don't cheat yourself. Don't surcharge yourself from the benefits of walking in truth. This is what this topic is all about. So many believers walk in truth. So many believers receive redemption from Christ. However, the other packages that comes with redemption, we surcharge ourselves. That's what this topic is all about. So that is, that is, you know, so he mentioned some of the things. He said, I wish that you be, he said, he talks about being in health. He talks about prosperity. These are all the packages that came, you know, when Jesus Christ came to die on the cross of Calvary. So this topic is challenging us as believers 
that you should not be satisfied by just being saved. You should insist on the other packages that come with being saved. That is your bed rights. So, <clears throat> we'll just, um, introduction says, after we surrender our lives to Jesus, he gave us our redemption package. So, he gave you already. So, if you're not enjoying it, it means it's your fault. That's, the, that's what it means. Inside this package is everything that will make life enjoyable to us. Life was meant to be enjoyed, not to be endured. These things make Christianity delightful and beautiful. Do you, know why most, do you know why most unbelievers don't join Christianity? The way most, most Christians portray Christianity, in fact, most unbelievers are scared to come. If this is what this is all about, then keep your, keep your this thing. You know, you know, a witness, we are all witnesses for Christ. A witness is a validator of a claim. So if you claim your Jesus heals, why are believers in sickness? So how do you convince the other person, come to Christ, he can heal you. And he looks at the church, there are a lot of sick people everywhere. And this does not validate the truth that you are trying to convince them about. This is what we are talking about. So he says, these things make Christianity delightful and beautiful. It is therefore expedient that we unfold our redemption package to fully enjoy its benefits. So for once of time, we'll just go straight to the outlines. We have two outlines. One, barriers to enjoying the redemption package. In summary, can someone give me just one barrier, one of the barriers that stops people from enjoying redemption package? We agree that there is a package that comes with redemption. Why are believers not enjoying it? That you said? Doubts. Position. So we can call. Hmm. Okay. So we can. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, so we can tame it as ignorance. And that is very true. Ignorance is one of it. Ignorance is one of the barriers that stop people from, from getting what God has in stock for them. From getting this. Re- Thank you very much. And like um, um, Daddy said also, talks about doubts. Some people don't even believe it. You can't receive what you don't believe. And you talked about ignorance. You can't receive what you are not even aware of. So that's very true. So we'll just go in barriers to enjoying the redemption package. There are some barriers that might limit Christians from enjoying the full benefits of redemption. And it talks here. Can someone open to John 8.32 verse? Please. Someone can quickly open to John 8.32. Another person can open to John 5.39. So we can be fast. Please. So it says here. Um, ignorance, ignorance of biblical truth is one of them. John eight thirty two. Anybody there? Amen. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall. So the truth you don't know cannot make you free. If you don't know that Jesus can heal, you how can you receive healing? If you don't know that Jesus gives power to prosper, how can you prosper? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So can we say that many believers are still in bondage because they don't know the truth? Ignorance of what, you know, is available to them. These benefits are written all over the pages of the Bible. We must search them out to know them. John 5.39. Anybody there? Hmm. Amen. Amen. So you have a responsibility. That's the point. And you know, this is, this is another point. All right? Many ignorance, you know, is what, when you don't search, 
able to study to show yourself approved. So you, that the scripture mommy read is talking about, you have to search for it. Okay? You search for it. There are lots of them written in the Bible. If you look at your life, whatever is lacking in your life, you have a responsibility to search what does the scripture say about this. And you use that to attack that problem. Are you ill? Are you sick? You look at what does the Bible talks about it. Are you in captivity? You look at what does the Bible talk about it. You invest into the world. You invest in the word of God and you make, you make good use of it for your deliverance, for whatever you want. So that is what that portion is talking about. And um, We may not be able to read all the scriptures for want of time. We still have our flying too, conscious of time. So we go to another reason. Um, until we discover them, we cannot enjoy them. And that's, those two scriptures have portrayed that. Another reason is that some Christians have been wrongly taught to be content with their present states. Honestly, I have seen this one a lot. Like, Christians are made to believe, ah, once you have saved, that's the most important thing. Just love God, just follow God, just praise him to God, and that's it. And the, their lives are barren of results. This is, they are contented with it. You know, there are a lot of Bible portions. If you want to convince yourself that, that a low life is good, there are Bible portions to back you up. Yes, the Bible portion to back you up. It says here, it says, sometimes you hear them say, thank God I am safe, at least I am going to heaven. You know, you know, we do quote different scripture, oh, godliness, uh, you know, with contentment. That is it. I have godliness, I am content. You can interpret it to favor your condition and remain there. That is the truth. Some Christians may decide to live and die like Lazarus, sick, afflicted, and poor, while others decide to live and die like Abraham. So that's the point I'm making. Everything you're looking for is in the Bible. Are you looking for a believer that dies sick and all that? They've told you here, Lazarus is your example. Are you looking for a blessed, a believer that still, still believes in God, still, still went to heaven, and yet lived a prosperous life? Abraham is there. So whatever you want is your choice. You know, I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. A blessing and cursing. So whatever, whichever one you want is available. Can someone quickly read for Luke 16 verse 20 to 21. He says, Some Christians may decide to live and die like Lazarus, sick, afflicted and poor, while others decide to live and die like Abraham, rich and healthy. Luke 6, verse 20 to 21. Anyone there? Luke 16, verse 20 to 21. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. So that is it. This was also a godly man. And he made his, he died like that, which we know about. And then the Bible also takes John 2, which we read already, what it talks about there, that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So the choice is ours. Do not be content with your present state. If it is not a pleasant one, this is the admonition today. They have presented to you two categories of Christianity, and they are giving you an advice. Don't be contented with your present state. If it is not a pleasant one, we must revolt against lack, want, sickness, affliction, and any other thing that does not bring glory to God in our lives. Our life is supposed to bring glory to God. There is no glory in being sick. There is no glory in a believer being in lack, in want. It, it, rather, it rather damns the name, the name of the Lord. It, rather, it does not validate the God we proclaim. So we, the Bible, they, so they write, they, you know, in this manner, they're talking about, you're supposed to fight it. In fact, as the same way you fight Satan, the same way you fight the devil, that's the same way you should fight poverty, fight lack, fight sickness. Because these things does not proclaim Christ in the right way. So if not for any other reason, because you want to reveal and glorify the name of Christ, that is why your life should present results. So any dimension of your life that is not giving results, you're supposed to fight against it. That is what this teaching is talking about.
And before we go into um, outline two, which is unfolding the redemption package, I personally, you know, when I was going through this study yesterday, you know, one of the things that came to my spirit to even like literally add as a, another reason. Do you know another reason why, like we are stating the reason, another reason why I've discovered in the body of Christ why believers don't enjoy this redemption package is laziness. I'm telling you the truth. Like when I was studying this, in fact, the reason was like just at number three, laziness. Because we talked about ignorance. There are some believers that actually know what the scripture says. They know what to do. They know everything. But that laziness, that they are not proactive. They are not proactive. Some believers get to a state where they want people to pray for them. It's just like when we had prayer shift that Sunday, like Minister Patrick was saying, he said, nobody is going to lay hands on you. Pray, you pray for yourself. Pray and deliver yourself. Some believers don't prefer that. They prefer maybe an atmosphere where, oh, the people, somebody just speak over your life. You are blessed. Amen. Somebody is praying for you. Amen. And then they will just believe, let me enjoy all the package. That particip yes, and continue. That participatory role, sitting down to invest time in the spirit. Look at the scripture. What is, does the scripture say about my condition? Engage in prayer, the ministry of the word, the word and prayer. The apostle say we will give ourselves continually to the word and to prayers. Those two things. People are not ready to pay the price price of prayer, the price of fasting to change their condition. They rather remain in their status quo even when they know what to do. May the Lord deliver us from this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Okay. If they... So, but... Yeah, yeah, some people might. I think it, it falls in that second category. It falls in the second point that was mentioned that, you know, some people are just like, provided I am saved. I don't want any, let me just focus and be saved. You know, the scriptures like the love of money is the root of all evil. So that's why that second point was saying that, you know, indoctrination, there are some places where, in fact, they indoctrinate you that are, ah, just be contented with what you have. So that mindset is also there that influences that the part of it. So we'll quickly go to our line two for once of time. He said, unfolding the redemption package. Some of the things that accompany salvation can be broadly categorized as follows. Number one, deliverance. This is being set free from the powers of kingdom of darkness. This includes Deliverance from causes and evil covenants. If someone can, we we'll just read one portion. Page. If someone can quickly read Galatians three thirteen, and if another person can open Second Timothy one verse seven. Yes, I'm checking that. So in um, deliverance from causes and evil covenants. Anybody in Galatians three thirteen? Okay, sir. God gave it to Abraham by promise. You know, you know when he talks here about deliverance from causes, the antidote, the antidote for cause is what? Blessing. And that's why this Bible portion is referring to Abraham. So that's part of the redemption package that came. You know, deliverance from um, causes and evil covenant. We'll just run through the rest for once of time. We might not be able to read the portions. And the second one is deliverance from the spirits of fear. 2 Timothy 1 7. Amen. So, so that is it. God did not give you the spirit of fear as a believer. So when fear wants to come, there are weapons in the word of God to use to fight it. Scriptures like, you know, the righteous are as bold as the lion. You proclaim them and then you walk in that experience. That is what we are talking about. It's part of what Jesus Christ came for. So fear is a torment. The next one is deliverance from demonic oppressions. You look, you know, um, like the Bible says in Luke uh, 10 verse 9, 
if which is part of the portions there. Look, 10 verse 9. And then we have deliverance from the wrath of God. So all these are the deliverances that we have. We might not be able to read the Bible for some for want of time. Um, and then the next one here is uh, victory. The next package we have there is victory. This means triumphing. If someone can quickly open 1 Corinthians 15.57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. So victory. This means triumphing, dominating, winning, succeeding, and conquering. So God had given you victory. He has won the victory. We used to sing hallelujah. He has won the victory. Christ won the victory for you at the cross. Anybody there in 1 Corinthians 15, 57? Amen. So we have victory over sin, victory as he said, yeah, victory over death, victory over sickness, victory over the devil, victory over death like he's read there. These are all the packages that came that Christ brought for us. We must walk in this experience. If you're not walking in the experience of any of it, it's your responsibility to insist, hold on to it, search the scripture that talks about it and cling on to it. The third thing and last one there is prosperity. If someone can open Psalms 118 verse 25. It says, abundant provisions have been made for us. Anyone there? Psalms 118 verse 25. So, so, okay. Send now prosperity. So you see, that's a, that's a Bible portion that talks about prosperity. So you look at your life. You're not working in the experience of prosperity. It's your responsibility to say scriptures like this and begin to pray. Father, send. this is a very direct prayer. Send now prosperity. There are portions like, oh, it is the Lord. He gave it power to prosper. He gave it you power to make wealth. All those things are there. There are messages about it. There are Bible portions. About you claim them. Engage them in prayer. So that it becomes a reality in your life. You know, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be be before we go into question, I want to quickly open a Bible portion that is not here. It's Revelation 5 verse 12. Can someone read for us? Revelation 5 verse 12. I want to give time also for question or contribution before we round up. Revelation 5 verse 12. Amen. So you see them, you know, you know, this is one of the scriptures when I was it's not in the manual, but the only thing brought this to me when I was, you know, looking at this project. You see what the Bible says in Revelation 5, verse 12. Worthy is saying with a loud voice, What is the lamb that was slain? What was he slain for? To receive for us. And they start counting the so for me, that is a checklist. That's a checklist of some of the things that he was slain to receive. What is the lamb that was slain to receive? These are the things he received for us. Remember, it was for your sake he went to the cross. And the, that Bible portion is counting for you, giving you a checklist of some of the things that Christ received for you. So what is the lamb that was slain to receive power? So you look at your life. Your life is barren of power. And the Bible says this is one of the things that he, was, he received for you at the cross. And you insist that you must walk in that power. So if you're not walking in the power of God, then you're not enjoying some of the packages you receive for you. He said to receive power and riches. Very clear. What is the lamb that was slain? These were the things he received for you. So I challenge you today. Look at this checklist. Which of them is are you not experiencing in your life? He said power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. What else? If you walk in all this, it covers everything. Both spiritual things and material things. So may the Lord help us to walk in this experience in the name of Jesus. The Lord help us to enjoy this redemption package and benefit that Christ received for us at the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Conclusion. If we as Christians look mournful and sickly, it may be that we have not been claiming a redemption benefit. We must claim our redemption package. It is our covenant right. That is our right. May the Lord help us to enjoy this right in Jesus' name. Amen.
any one minute contribution or question? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Does anybody ha still have any questions? So to say, actually, while you are asking a question, I, I want to, I don't know if you read this on that side. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 9. I know children are going to their class now. That's fine. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Uh, I think. Let me read from verse. Let me read verse. Uh, verse eight. Yeah. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances. And whatever the need be self-sufficient, um, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. This is very, very explicit. And that's why I re read it in the Amplified uh, Classic. The Lord himself is speaking in many ways to us. And I'm sure we know this is part of the package. If anybody is living in wants and all of that, let's understand that some of the reasons is not just that we, 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 we believe, we also need some actions to take. Okay? Uh, verse 9 says, as it is written, he, the benevolent person, scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever. And God who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your, gener of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. May the Lord bless the word in our hearts in Jesus' name. So welcome to church, everybody. We're going to go right into the worship. And I want to believe and trust the Lord that we're here believing the Lord for you know, a great blessing. We prayed some prayers this morning before the service started, and it was so awesome. Believing that nobody will go back the same. Believing that for you as an individual, the packet that God has for you today, you will not miss it. That is what we prayed, and that's what we believe. And we said, God must help each one of us to be calm, to be ready to receive, to take hold of everything. That means no distraction. Don't allow anybody to distract you. To distract you. Don't allow anybody to take your attention. Because that's your responsibility. Yes, you see, that's your responsibility. So let all of us put our hearts where it's meant to be. When the worship is going on, we are engaging. No distraction. God is going to help us. There's order in the house. And mm. God is faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Over to you, sir. Choir. <laughs> Hello, good morning, church. Please, may we rise up. It's time to worship God. Thank you, Jesus. May we rise up, please. It's time to worship and honor God. Begin to speak to the Lord God Almighty even this morning. I don't know what you've come in here with what your expectations are. Just believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power of God 
that is inside of us. Begin to speak to the Almighty God. Lord, we thank you for a new day. We bless your name. We worship you. We exalt you. We've come to meet with you, Lord. We've come to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you have your way in our midst. Have your way in this place, Lord. Father, fill this place with your glory, Lord. Fill this place with your presence and your power. Father, even as we worship you, we ask that you begin to do mighty things in our midst. Begin to do glorious things in our midst, O oh God. Let no one remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, glory. Oh, Use 
I want you to open your mouth and shout the thunderous hallelujah it's time to dance I hope you are all here with your dancing shoes in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy so if you see anybody beside you that is not dancing or moving his or her body just do like this to that person tell them shake your body shake the cold away in the presence of the Lord Hallelujah! Are you ready? Come on! All right, listen. I don't know what the Lord has done. He has destroyed the work of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's what we we'll see. Oh, say it. I've heard what the Lord has done. 
He has destroyed us Satan He has given us the victory That's what we see Hosea 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 Hosea
Let's be holy. If you know your blessing is time, come on. Do you stay God? Oh, come on, come on. I never see your time. I never see your time. Oh, hey. Do you stay God? Oh. Listen, listen. Hey. I say, your love is so great. Your mercy for gracious. You read in my soul from every destruction. I will sing your praise. I will dance and lift you up. I, you be so much to me, Jesus. No one like you. Cause all my people, cause all my people, my ears is low. Cause all my people. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. In any hand. There's no one like you. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah, <laughs> All right, somebody say bye bye. Somebody say bye bye. Bye 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 to the left, to the right. I say, what are you doing? I am dancing. Somebody say bye bye. Somebody say bye bye. Somebody say bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Somebody say he goes. Somebody say he goes. Somebody say he goes. Somebody say he goes. All right, I will tell you the music. I'm singing your song to the Lord. Tell you the song in my heart. Sing a new song to the Lord. I will pray. I will pray. Glory, 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 glory. Sing a new song to the Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Sing a new song. Wait, I go give to you. Wait, I go give to you. I know not get money. We know what's money. Wait, I go. To me, where did I go? Get to me. I know that's funny. Oh, my Jesus, oh, I'm funny. Where did I go? Get to you. Where did I go? Get to you. I pray. To you, my friend. Somebody scream! Hallelujah! Just giving worship in the morning. 
just worship him this morning our God is good and his presence is so heavy in our midst the Bible says inhabit in the presence of his people just worship him this morning just give him the glory sing a new song to him adore him exalt him he's Jehovah he's Adonai there is one like unto him he's our father he's our messiah our provider our keeper the Bible says he that keepeth Israel he does not pass nor sleep you sleep like a baby you wake up every morning but God is always awake watching over you oh worship him adore him thank you for his faithfulness he has kept you from January to December our God is good our God is faithful our God is Honor him this morning. Sing a new song to him this morning. Oh, let us sing the Father, we worship you. Oh, Rapale, the Father, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You are
trustworthy father a father that looks out for his children a father that never gives up on his children a father that ever so compassionate about his children you know Matthew 7 I read from verse 9 it says on what man is there of you if his son asks him for a loaf of bread, will hand him a stone. 
or if he asks for a fish, we hand him a serpent. It says, for if you then, evil as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gift to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give good and advantageous things to those who keep on asking him. That is the father. Perfect as he is. Perfect father. You know, I want to thank God for the worship, those words, those songs, the father like no father. You know, we're going to give our offering, but please don't break this atmosphere. This atmosphere is so precious. We come to our father who has given us such, you know, such benevolence. This God is so awesome. Who brought each and every one of us from whatever low estate we were and has given us salvation. A whole package, that's what we learned in Sunday school. It's a package of health, healing, uh, prosperity, and everything in that package. Perfect as he is, our father. We have a chance at this point to give a token if you love this father. Your father, your savior, your master, your king, my father, my savior, my king, my lord, my redeemer, my messiah. It's time to just love on him. Love on him. And while you are doing that, don't forget, you know, the song says, see how far, see how far, see how far he's taken you, see how far he's brought you, see from where you have, you have been brought to this point right now. That's why you don't care what they, what, you know, people who have made not understand why you love him recklessly. They don't know, they don't know where he brought you from, they don't know where he brought me from. You don't know how messed up I was. You have no clue. So when I love on my father recklessly, the one who's loved me so much, Father, we are here as your children. We just want to love on you because you have loved us so much. Thank you, Lord, for this love is unparalleled. We recognize it so. Because even we, ordinary as we are, as we are we give good things to our children. How much more you, perfect as you are. So here we are, Father. Just coming to say thank you for keeping us through the thick and the thin. We have come to say thank you for all of the things you brought us through. When they say there is no hope, you have given us hope. When they say there is no way, you have made a way. When the door has been shut and closed in our faces, you have broken the barriers down and you've made a way for us. Yes, Lord. We've come to honor, to worship, to say thank you. Because nobody could have passed us through. Nobody could have saved us. Nobody could have delivered us. Nobody could have helped us. Nobody could have been there for us. When they say, there is no way, there's no, there's no way out. When they say, there's a casting down. When they say, it's over. Yes, Lord.
Father, we see what you have done for us. We see how far you have brought us. We are so, so grateful. 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 You see, however tough you may think it is, however hard you may think it is, if you didn't have Jesus, if you didn't have his understanding, it would be a billion times worse. People in the same place, in the same situation, without Christ, they are on medication. Yeah. They are on medication. Yes. Because they have lost hope and they cannot think it through. They are on medication. Do you know how the percentage of people that are on antidepressants in this country? Do you know how what the percentage is? It's one out of four. It is one out of four. That's how serious as it is. So you have a reason to be grateful. Apart from what we give as offering, apart of what we give as tokens, look, it's a thing to give the whole of ourselves. Over and over and again, it still will not be enough to say thank you. Because you cannot pay the Lord for what he has done. Father, we are not taking this for granted at all. We recognize your love for us. Because we are spirits, we know how to give good things to our children. Yes, Lord, for you, our Father, we know the great, beautiful gifts of yourself, of salvation, of redemption, of healing, of prosperity. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You know, we could go on and on and on. See how far the Lord has brought us. So, Heavenly Father, is a token I'm trying to I'm trying to do my own as well. We have brought a token, Lord, of the blessings that we have of you. We've come, Father God, to give a token. And we're asking, Lord, that you receive this of our hands. Receive it of our hands, oh God. Let it be used to the glory of your holy name for the work you are doing in this house, Father, that we are participants and we are partakers of. And we see how much you have done here. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be able to give, to be part of them, oh God, that you are using for the work in this house and in this ministry. And for RCCG as a whole, Lord, we are grateful. We are so grateful. We ask, oh God, that you accept all our tithes, accept, oh God, all of our, all our offerings. Father, please accept ourselves. Accept our dance. Accept our words. Accept us completely. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we just thank the Lord? Let's just make it clap up to the Lord. That's part of the things we offer. We offer our clap up to the Lord. You can have your seats. God bless you. You 
You are very welcome to church. This is New City of Redemption, Ashford RCCG Parish. We thank God. How many days is it to Christmas now? Eight? Eight, right? Eight days to Christmas. So how many days to the new year? Sixty. Can you see how far the Lord has brought us? Three hundred and how many days? Fifty-five. Or something like that, yeah? To the, I mean, to the, I mean, how far we've come and to the rest of the year. The Lord has been merciful to you and to me. There have been many waters, that, they, like they say, that has passed under the bridge. So many waters. If somebody told us, beginning of this year, that we'll be here now and at this level, we would really have doubted it. And for each of your lives, you can think and you can look back. God has been so great. Look, whatever it is we are still asking God for, he gave us an assurance that if you, as fathers, parents, you know how to give good to your children, say how much more? Your father. Your father. Perfect father. How many of you are perfect fathers? Perfect fathers in the house? <laughs> perfect fathers. Perfect fathers, yeah? The perfect father that we have is the Almighty himself. He calls himself perfect. There's no blemishes. And he has everything everything that you could be asking for. So when he says keep on asking, when he says keep on seeking, when he says keep on knocking, it's not because he didn't hear you. It's for your sake that you know to have a relationship with this father. And I want to thank God because today we prayed, we say nobody will be distracted because God has, yeah, we, we prayed and I can see that, you know, because it is you, you must make up your mind. I'm not going to be distracted. Somebody could be trying. Mm, nobody's going to distract me. Because there's a package. That's a moving forward. There's a shifting. And you can't be left out. You can't be left out. You've got to make up your mind. I'm not going to be left out. That's a shift and we're shifting forward. Is God not awesome? God has made up his mind that he's not going to leave any one of us behind. So it is important that you make yourself ready for the move of the Lord. And God is in the house. Praise the Lord. Can I ask us to bow our hands as I bring up pastor? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so very much. Our father. Our perfect father. Our good father. Thank you for what you have done for us. And thank you for where you are taking us. Thank you for the movement forward. There's no stagnancy. And our Lord, as we, you know, submit ourselves again under your mighty hand, that you will speak to us, that you will enable us. We ask, oh God, please give us everything we need at this time, Father, because we keep, we keep on asking. We keep on seeking. We keep on knocking. Please send forth your word to us. Please bring forth your word to us. You see, when, they, when God wants to help a man, he will send his word. It will send direction. Please enable us to hear and to take hold of that which you have for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your servant in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, empower him, especially the anointing for this hour, fresh from heaven. Please bestow upon him in the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare that he himself will be blessed by the words that you bring through him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I is an awesome God he from heaven above we Oh, 
surrender our hearts unto you at this moment that our hearts will be receptive to your word that our hearts prepared by the spirit of the Lord to receive seed that will bring forth fruits in our lives that will bring profit to us in the mighty name of Jesus. All the stones, all the tongues, they are removed completely from our hearts. And our hearts are made receptive, conducive, and acceptable to your word. Let the utterance of my mouth be the one that come from your throne of grace. Let the speakings of my, of my mouth be acceptable. Be that which we edify. Be that which we bring life, not death. That which we bring glory to your people not condemnation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Heavenly Father. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The uh, Holy Ghost Congress that has just finished in Nigeria. And the theme was divine repositioning. Now, we have been on Thursday, we try to look at it again and see how we apply it to our lives. And of course, there are so many dimensions by which you can look at it. So we, we, we want to we want to see how we look at it again to see how it applies to our lives more. But before we go deep into that, I will want us to pray for ourselves. The the year is going to an end. And perhaps there are things you have been expecting the Lord to do in your life and has not happened. I want us to pray for ourselves. As we talk about divine repositioning, I want us to pray that God in his mercy will reposition us to be in the right place at the right time, at the right moment with the right people with the right company 
so that we will not miss what you have in stock for us. I want us to pray. I want us to just rise up on our feet. I want us, I want us to pray to, to the Almighty God. The year is going to an end. But Lord, God operates out of time. God is not bound by time. But to us, human beings, we are looking at, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. But I want us to pray the Lord, for me to receive that which I have been longing to receive. Lord, if it requires that I be repositioned, that I may receive this before the end of this year, Father, reposition me in the mighty name of Jesus. I want your mighty hands upon my life to redirect me, to reposition me divinely so that I don't miss your plans. I don't miss your purpose. I don't miss that which I ought to receive this year. That which I ought to receive this year will not be postponed till another time. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be this divine repositioning to bring me in line, to bring me in focus, to bring me where I'm supposed to be so that your blessing can be upon me so that I, I will not miss your blessing upon my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my shekariba sandale. She branon se brene sandale bosha. She kani branon bosha. Se mangari do se brane se. She brane bosha. Nege bosha san brene she klade sto li branon bosha. Le ma so brene sto li klade bosha. Brene so brene skala gata ya de branon bosha. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 talks about all things work together for good for them that love God. <laughs> I want us to pray that all things will work together for my good. All things, all situations whatever they may be right now in my life, as you reposition me, let all things work together for my good. Because I love you, my Father. I love you, my Father. And I am called according to your purpose. Let all things work together for my good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Supposedly, they were supposed to work against me. But Lord, because I love you, because I walk according to your purpose, let all things work together together for my good because I love you Lord I love you Lord that situation that they said is not possible Lord you will walk and turn it around they said it's not possible but Lord says it is possible they said it cannot be but God says it, it shall be so let it be according to your purpose let it be according to your divine counsel in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Let's have our seat. How many of us drive cars? Are you a driver? A driver? Are you a driver? Do you have a car? If you have a car, that is something that is necessary every year that you have to do with your car. What is it? MOT. And what is MOT? What is MOT? What is MOT? <laughs> Ministry of Transport. That's it. Ministry of Transport, that is MOT. And what do they do? They check roadworthiness of your vehicle. They want to make sure that you comply, that your vehicle is fit for purpose. And if it's not, what's going to happen? 
you fail and you can't drive the car until you make it right. There is a divine emotion for our lives. And we need, we need to regularly do that divine emotion for our lives. Because we don't want at a point in our lives or at the end of our race, Sir, I knew you not, you workers of iniquity. That will not be our case in the mighty name of Jesus. Because there is a, there is a need for us to be also do that divine emotion for ourselves. The Bible says, see for yourself if you are still in faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 at least 5, verse 5. See, you know, for yourself. Are we, are we flashing it up? Okay, sir. Examine yourselves. So what do you do when you go for MOT? You examine. Actually, let me read it from Amplified. We need to get amplified into this thing so that we can. Amplify says, examine and test. Hmm? You test, you test your car. You test yourself also. Go into examination to test yourself and evaluate yourself to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruit of it. There is a need for us to do that. And if we find ourselves wanting, it is better for us to judge ourselves rather than allowing God to judge us. I was, I was, I was eavesdropping, was I actually? At a training yesterday, we were trained, that, that was a discipleship training. And the, the minister was saying that many of us will run away from correction. Maybe the pastor corrects you because you have done something wrong. You get angry and you just, just go. Go to another place or something. You say, oh, you don't know what you are doing. If God should be the one because you have rejected the correction. If the pastor wanted to ask you to just stand up for five minutes, are you ready? to stand up for five minutes and you run away. If God is the one that is going to punish you for five minutes, do you know how long it's going to be? That five minutes may be 5,000 years because a day in the presence of the Lord is like what? So if you are supposed to be punished for five minutes on earth and you run away, how long do you think your punishment is going to be? May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. It's good for us to examine ourselves. If we are still in the faith or we are just following the group, following them to church. You see, David was at this point in his life. In his life. Huh? David got to this point in his life. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. You know, he got to a point when he said, Oh, why cast wow? I mean, why why so cast down oh my soul? But before he got to that that part, part, okay, we have okay, we have let's leave that one. We have gone away from that one. No, no, no. Move, move, move back to you know. Move back to verse. Let's let's start from verse three. Let's see. Because he said he was just following them. No. Oh, I didn't put it that way. Okay, let's let's get there. My tears have been my my meat. Let's go back to okay. Let's start from verse one. It's not really it's not a long song. Okay, it says as they had panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after the O God. I had you be panting after after God all the time, seeking to to drink from the river of life. We have to be yearning. We have to be looking forward. We have to be, ah, okay. 
Next verse. My soul trusted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Which means there has been a way from God. Then he said, no, Lord, my God, I need to appear before the Lord. There is a need for us to reposition ourselves to God in everything we do. David saw himself go, going back, you know, going away from God, straying away from God. Let your anchor hold. Don't be drifted away. Things are happening right and center. But let your anchor hold that you don't drift away because of one simple thing that somebody told you. Because your husband said, or because your wife said, or because your boss said, then you allow yourself to be drifted away. Let's reposition ourselves. David said, When shall I appear before God? Next verse. My tears have been my meat day and night. Why they continually say unto me, Where is your God? Next verse. When I remember. Ah, your case will not be there like that. You will not be, I used to. I used to be in the church. I used to be in the choir. I used to minister. I used to, I used to, I used to. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept all the day. But he was far away. He was. Because what? He was running away. The enemy was chasing him. So he didn't. He couldn't. He couldn't go. He couldn't be with the assembly. In the assembly of the people. I don't know what is chasing you. I don't know what is running after your life. There is the need for you to run back. Let's reposition. Let's reposition ourselves. Let's reposition ourselves. So when we talk about divine repositioning, I said we can look at it, in, you know, but we need to look at it. In, you know, it's not it's not all the time. It's not everything. Oh, reposition me so that I can marry. Reposition me. That, that is good. But again, when we are repositioned. We are God is supposed, we are supposed to be. Then what is supposed to happen in our lives will happen naturally. Naturally. Because we are where we are supposed to be. We are doing what we are supposed to do. Our heart aligns with the Lord. You see, when you do when 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 when, when they when you they test your car, they want to see how the tires align together. Because if they don't align, then your car will be like this. Alignment. We need to align ourselves with the Almighty God. That is to reposition ourselves. Reposition ourselves. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith and showing the proper fruit of it. Test and prove yourselves. Do not, I mean, do you, do you not yourself realize and know by an ever increasing experience that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you are, you, you disprove, you, you disapprove untried and rejected. Examine. There is a need for us to examine ourselves. We should live our lives to be sure that we are doing the right things, we are in the right place, 
we are doing what we are supposed to do. Because it is very easy to drift away. But like I said, let your anchor hold. Because in life, we are faced with torrents, vehement, and uncompromising winds all the time. There is never an atmosphere that is conducive for you as a child of God to grow is never, it's always contra, it's always you know, but when your anchor is holding, no matter the rages of the enemy the rages of the storm against your soul you can only sway and as you are swaying in fact you are giving glory to God because you are praising him even as you are swaying up and down, you turn it into music. You turn it around to a music. They say, if the enemy throw lime to you, turn it into lemonade. Turn your situation around. No matter what the world throws at you, don't let it move you. Don't let it disrupt your life. Turn it around. Change it. So, when we talk about re divine reposition, already we know that you, you are, you are actually repositioned to where you are today as a Christian. You used to be an unbeliever before. But when the grace of God come upon your life, the grace brought you where you are today. The grace of God repositioned you from being God hater to God lover. Brought you away from being under the wrath, continuous wrath of God to be a, in a place where you become the lover of that God loves you and you become vessels of mercy. You know, we have vessels of mercy and we have vessels of wrath. The vessels of wrath, or wrath, of wrath are those that God prepared to. Like Pharaoh. But God delivered you. The Bible says he had conveyed us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Now we have inheritance with the saints of the Lord. You have been repositioned from darkness to light. Don't seek to go back to darkness. It's a place of death. Don't seek to go back to the place of death. Don't seek to go back. Don't seek to reposition yourself. You know, you have been repositioned into a divine life, into a life of glory. The Bible says, they that have received abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness, they will reign in life as kings. That's where you have been repositioned to. To reign in life. To reign in life. You have been repositioned to reign in life. That is what God has done for you. Don't seek to reposition yourself from where God has placed you. Let your feet be planted upon the solid rock that nothing will shake you. The demands of the society will not shake you. The demands from your family will not shake you. The demands from your Father-in-law, mother-in-law, whatever-in-law will not shake your leg, will not shake you. You are well-rooted. Because all these things, they are channeled to, 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 to sweep you off. Demands of life. Even demands concerning your family. Sometimes they can be daunting. Sometimes they can be overwhelming. But be determined 
not to reposition yourself from where God had positioned you to be. So, never be transplanted or repositioned from your place in Christ Jesus. You have a place in Christ Jesus. And peradventure you are here, you are not born again. There is a need for you to reposition yourself. There is a need for you to move out from whatever company you have been keeping. There is a need to reposition yourself to where God wants you to be. But if you are already born again, don't seek to go back. The one area in which we are never to be replanted or repositioned is our place in Jesus Christ. Having believed on him and received him as our Lord and Savior, we are told to abide in him. So there is a need for us to abide in, in him continually. Abide in the vine. Abide in him. When you abide in him, he also will abide in you. And when you abide in him, you will not lack all things because you are, you are joined directly with the source of life. And there is this continual supply of life to you. Life to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So, let's join. He that joined to the living, there is hope for him. But, to a dead lion, there is no hope. You are not dead lions. You are joined to the living. And therefore, there is hope for you. No matter the situation you may find yourself today, there is hope for you. Because you still have the life of God. And what has not been today will come to be in a short while. The Bible says, joy cometh. Joy cometh. I want you to say, joy cometh. Joy cometh. <laughs> joy cometh in the morning. I may be in, I may be weeping now. I may be weeping now. I may be in the place of weeping now. But I know joy cometh. There is a light at the top at the end of the tunnel for me. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. So don't seek to draw back. Because God has no pleasure in them that draw back. You only have pleasure in them that will proceed. Moses got to the Red Sea. The children of Israel, they, they felt, oh, let's go back, let's go back. In fact, they couldn't go back again. Because behind them was the, the host of, you know, Egypt. The host of the enemies pursuing them. And before them is the, is the Red Sea. So, <laughs> oh my God. so what would what would they do? But God said, "Go, move, don't stay there." Even though the situation may be tough, may look tough, but God is telling you, "Don't, don't draw back." There is no hope for you when you go back, but there is hope for you when you step forward, take the step of faith, and move forward. That's what they did. And the rest will part. The rest will part for you. The rest will part for you. That tough situation will part for you. You will not give up. You don't belong to them that give up. No matter what it is, face it. You go through. When you turn your back at your enemy, you are gone. But is it turn your back? <laughs> yeah, because you don't have anything protecting your back. You don't have anything protecting you. The shield of faith, the head, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, they are all in the front. They are all like that. There is no breastplate of backwardness. Sorry. <laughs> huh? 
There's nothing like that. So you have to go. Move forward. My brethren, children of mystery, they move forward and you see parted. See, we part for you. It will part for you. The Bible said, I mean, the, the, the experience of Elijah, Elisha, now when he had collected the, the mantle from Elisha, was that the fact that when, I mean, he suddenly found himself that if I don't do, if this miracle doesn't happen, then I'm grounded here. I can't go back. I can't, I can't go. I cannot cross this sea. I can't go back to my, to, to fulfill my destiny. So what did he do? He took the mantle and said, where is the God of Elijah? Elijah. And, this, and the Bible says, the, 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 the water parted thither and thither. The water, the, the sea before you will part thither and thither for you. That you will pass through the, the dry ground in the mighty name of Jesus. There is no going back. There is no going back. God has repositioned you to a place of glory, to a place of honor, to the place where you receive everything that, that the Bible says, all that I require for life and godliness, they are given unto you already. So what, are you, what, are, what else are you looking for? There is nothing over there. I was there before. I was there. I was there. But thank God, since I turned my back to that place, I didn't have any reason to go back. There was nothing to go back there to. There was nothing. There was nothing enticing there again for me. Nothing. Nothing. I tell you. So, it's not, it's not as if we have not tasted it. We tasted it. Seriously. Badly. But grace of God brought me out. And when I was brought out, I said, Father, I'm not going back again. So there is nothing that we do that will entice me to go there. Nothing. Nothing. I won't go back to the way I used to be before your presence. Sing it again. Before your presence came and changed. I want you to sing it as you mean it and do your chest like this. Go back and we know to the place I used to. For your presence came and changed me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now. So the Bible says. Okay, let, let, let's look at this scripture. Before. You know, the Bible, we, the, the, the deep call unto the deep. That's what we want to do. You know, because when, when, when David got to that level, he had to, you know, he had to call, you know, let the deep call unto the deep. He had to come back and jack himself up like a car that has been grounded because the battery is gone. What do you do? You jumpstart it. You know, <clears throat> Some of us Africans, the way we jumpstart is that we, 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 we allow the, the car to roll down the hill and we remove your leg from GR2 and they jar up. They don't understand it here. All they do is to put battery. Put battery. I, did it, I, I did it for some people. They, they were wondering, oh, how did you do this? I said, don't worry, I'm from Africa. So we need to jumpstart ourselves. If we don't have a bad, uh, what do you call it? A uh, jumper, a uh, jumper, jumpstarter. 
push down the do, do the you know down the slope so that's what david did to, to himself so i read it again for you i read it i read it see when i remember those things i pour out my soul within me for i used to go with the multitude i went with them to the house of god with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that keep it a pilgrim pilgrim feast why are you cast down o oh my soul and why are you disquieted within me hope in god for i shall yet praise him for the help of my of, of, of his countenance oh my god my soul is cast down within me therefore i will remember you from the land of jordan and from the heights of Ammon, from the, from the hill Niza, deep calls unto deep, at the noise of your waterfall, all your waves and billows have gone over me. Let deep call unto the deep. Let deep call unto the deep. For you in the mighty name of Jesus, for you to come back to where you are supposed to be, so when we talk about deep call unto, unto the deep, we are saying the spirit of God reaching deep into the spirit of, of, his, of his children. Bypassing all that which would attend to, to impend that sweet communion and fellowship that God so passionately desired to have. The enemy don't want you to praise the Lord. The evil ones want you to, sor- to be sorrowful. They don't want you to rejoice over anything. But let the deep call unto the deep in your life. So that you can come to that place of, you know, a place of fellowship with your father. A place of joy. A place of rejoicing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the deep call unto the deep. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the deep call unto the deep. We need to go deeper. We need to go deeper. Into that spiritual realm that we are supposed to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. What are we living for? If we are not living for God then the life we are living is a waste. What are we living for? Hmm. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me now this is crucial what am I living for if not for you Jesus so it says and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. So what are we living for? What are we living for? If we are not living for him that has gave himself for us, then we need to reposition our lives. We need this divine repositioning so that we live our life to please him who has died for us. You see? The understanding should be that <laughs> this life that I'm living is not mine. I have, I have been given another life. And the life, which means the life that I'm living is not my own. It's not mine. So it, I cease to see myself as the owner of everything. If God has given you a wife, cease to see yourself as the owner of that wife. 
Because God gave you the wife. If God has given you children, praise God for that. Cease to be the owner of that children. Because God, the life you live now, you live through the Son of God who loved you and gave himself to you. Many of us, we hold on to our children so much, so much, that God is just looking at us, okay, if you say it's yours, then over to you then. We need to release either your husband, either your children, release them to God. Because the life you live now is not your life. So the children you have in this life, they are not your children in actual fact. They are children of God. I want us to learn from this and just it's not as if you are throwing your children away. No, we are not asking you to throw them and say, no, 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 no. You know, you are children of God. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but we, there is a way we jealously guard our children, our things, my car, my house, my this, my this, my this. And we have forgotten that this life we are living is not ours. So whatever you achieve, they are not yours. Whatever you have, they are not yours. Even the Bible says, children are the reward. Oh, they, they, how does that scripture go? It says, you see now you know it. But you forget it when it comes to this, you know, you know. They, they are, you know, they belong to God. They are just caretakers. They are just caretakers. But we have gone to the level of death. Thank you. I'm not. I'm the owner. This is mine. So I want this scripture to help us in everything we do, even your life, your life, yeah, your life. Because when 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 you are still considering that you are the owner of your life. Then when God wants to use you for something, you say, no, 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 this is my life. I do my life. I do what I do. I like to do what I like in my life. You know? so, so God leave you to do your life with what you like to do with your life. Then God has no responsibility over your life again. So, but, but, so let us believe that Christ that lives in us is the one that holds this life and therefore we leave everything to please him. We do everything to please Christ who is the owner of this body. Use your body to glorify God. Use your, your everything you have. Use your knowledge. Use your understanding. Ah, thank God for people who are doing that already. Thank God for people who are, you know, using their talent to bless the name of the Lord. Because they know that that talent belongs to God, not them. Because that thing can go, can just disappear. But thank God for those people who have put, put themselves down to be used by God. To do the things of God. So there is a need for us to reposition ourselves. There is a need for us to have an unbroken relationship with our Father continually. Romans chapter 6 from verse 11. Romans 6 from verse 11. I'll read quickly from here. It says, Even so, consider yourself also dead to sin, and your relationship to reach is broken. But alive to God, alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with Him, in Christ Jesus, let not sin therefore rule as king in your mortal body, in your short-lived body, in your perishable bodies, to make you yield to his craving and to subject to, to his lust and evil passions. Do not continue offering or yielding your body, your members and faculties to sin as instruments 
as tools of wickedness. Instrument of wickedness. Ah. God forbid that children of God will view themselves as instrument of wickedness. Ah. God forbid. But sometimes we do a little bit of wickedness here and there. May the Lord deliver us. May the Lord deliver us. Because sometimes when we see some, something that is, that is contrary to what we believe, we try to, you know, uh, let's, let, let love, let the love of Christ well up from our hearts towards everybody. No wickedness. No, nothing. Nothing contrary. So it says, but offer and yield yourself to God as though you have been raised from the dead to life. That's the life we are living because you are dead, but you are raised from death to life. So the life you are living is no more your life. It belongs to him. So live that life to please him, not yourself. Not yourself. Presenting them as implements of righteousness. For sin shall not or shall no longer exact dominion over you. How many of us have prayed that prayer? Sin will not have dominion over me. Sin will not have dominion over me. Sin will not have dominion over me. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am not under sin. I am not under law. But I'm under grace. No more under the law. So sin will not have dominion over me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have been repositioned to a place of glory. We have been repositioned to a place where we enjoy the goodies from God. Don't let us seek to reposition ourselves by what we do, by what we say, by what we desire, by what we pursue. But let what we pursue be that which is which, which we glorify God. That which we are exerting our, our, our power, our energy upon. Let it be those things that, that bring glory to God. Not glory to ourselves, but Him who has gave himself for us. Him who loved us and gave himself. So the life we live now, we live for him. Not for ourselves. Hallelujah. There is a new song that says, I live for Jesus day after day I live for Jesus, yet come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey, I live for Jesus, day after day. Let's rise up on our feet and sing it. And I live for Jesus day after day. I live for Jesus. Yet come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey. I live for Jesus. Day after day, I live for Jesus. I live for Jesus. Day after day. I live for Jesus, yet come what may, the Holy Spirit, I will obey, I live for Jesus, day after day, do you live for Jesus, I live for Jesus. If you are here 
and you know in your heart you need to reposition yourself to the side of God if you are here and you know in your heart that you need to rededicate your life to Christ don't let this moment pass you by don't let this moment pass you by. If you have anybody like that in our midst, you want to align yourself. Your, your MOT has failed. But now you want to make yourself, you want to pass your MOT. Let's come to Jesus. Let's come to him. Let our heart draw back unto him. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray for yourself that I've gone far or I want to align myself with you Father accept me to yourself at this time I have done I have, I've gone everywhere but there is no place for me again but Lord I come to you I come to rededicate my life to you or I come to give my life totally and completely to you I come to surrender my life to you Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, eternal Rock of Ages. Whatever our lives need at this time, let your divine hands reposition us to where we ought to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, every heart that has yielded unto you, every heart that has yielded unto you, Father, by your divine power, let them be repositioned to the place of glory, to the place where you yourself would be happy with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We we'll give you all the praise, we we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just bless the Lord for his goodness to us? Can we thank the Lord? 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 There is no other reposition you want to do much more than to reposition back into Christ and say, Father, Lord, we are grateful. And if there's anybody who rededicated their lives, or today is actually you gave your life to Christ for the first time, please don't go home except to speak to Pastor. Please make sure you write this up and it is perfect and it is complete. Do not go home the way you came. And we want to believe the Lord. It will perfect your work with him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now we pray for pastor in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, as the son lays before you upon your altar, even at this time we pray, Father God Almighty, that you restore, you anoint him afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, every one of the virtue that has gone out of him, Father God, let there be restoration, let there be replenishment in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, anoint him afresh for your work, for your ministry, in the mighty name of Jesus. And every word he has proclaimed and pronounced, Father God, as your oracle, we pray those words will be a benefit to his life as well, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God not good? God is so good. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to bless the Lord for everyone who is here. If you look at the time, it's 10 minutes to 1. Isn't that nice? Yes. But sorry, I just want to say that um, as the Lord helps us, you know, when we come to church early, somehow it finishes early. So I want to implore us, let's not be coming late. Let's be coming right on time. Because every step of the way, there are packages that you can get your own beat at any point in time. I was so blessed by the Sunday school today. And I know that many of us came, but please, we, we can be more for Sunday school. Let's make it a point to come early for Sunday school. There's so much that was delivered. Thank God for the teachers for Sunday school today. I want to just thank God for them. Thank God for the teachers for Sunday school today. It was, it was really great. Or maybe I was one that was so blessed and I'm thinking, oh, wow, it was, it was so great. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to give us the announcements uh, now. Like we said at the beginning, well, not beginning, at some point, that um, Christmas, virtually for us, this Christmas uh, is next week. Our Christmas celebration is next week, Sunday. So by the grace of God, 
I'm praying and hoping you will be here. There's a lot of goodies that's going to be here if you come. Um, we may not be chasing after you if you didn't come. So please make sure you come. There's so much blessing that's going to be here uh, as we come together. And because it is special Christmas carol concert and it's going to be awesome. I don't know if you can. Oh, thank God. Thank you. That's it. Wise men still, uh, still seek Jesus. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be everything. Word, drama, and in fact, carol. I thank God for the choir. They've done this many times now. And so I can understand that even this year is going to be, you know, we're in a new place now, right? Cool. We're in a new place now. So it's going to be much more awesome. Before, we used to be at a different place where they used to chase us now <laughs> with time and everything. But by the grace of God, um, you know, the advantage we have in having our own place is what we're beginning to see. We have put this on since now. Before, you have to be the day before, isn't it? Or the night before. And quickly by the afternoon. Is God not? Can we just, just celebrate the Lord? Let's just celebrate the Lord. Let's just celebrate God. Really? That's, that's, that is great. It's awesome. It's, it's really great. It's really great. Hallelujah. So let me, the Christmas uh, lunch on Jesus as well. If you remember, we were told to give into it. A lot of people gave. Thank God for everybody that has been such a blessing to make that a reality. On Saturday the 23rd, it will, uh, the, all the things we paid for, all the, those things, money you contributed, the packages, quite a lot of them actually, will be coming. They're coming from the main office and the central office, isn't it? Coming and we are going to be used as a hub, you know? So that means from us, other redeemed parishes will come and collect their own, even from us. Can you imagine? Are we not blessed? <laughs> yes, it's such a beautiful thing. So what happens is on Saturday, well, we're not really completely sure of the time, but they are meant to be coming here in the morning. You are sure of the time. It's not 8.30. 8.30 to 9. That's when it arrives here. And then the packaging and the... Oh, okay. We are going to make sure. But what we are saying is some people have already made themselves available to be part of that team. For you, it is composite that you are here on that Saturday. But for those of us who have availability, please come as well and join. Because you see, when those things are put together, we are going to give them out to the community. That's what that's the reason we did that. That's for all the money you pay. That's what it is. It's not for all those one is not for us. Our own will be on, on Sunday. But for the Saturday, we are going to be giving these packages out to people out there. It's not gonna be it's gonna be awesome. You see, a package wrapped, wrapped, packaged, and it's not cheap. I mean, you know how much each one costs. 15 pounds is the is the base. 15 pounds, 25 and, and 35 pounds. So it's really beautiful, worthy gift. Some of them you will take to even some people around. Some of us have neighbors that will need those things. Yeah, we're just going to be share the love of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is love. Yeah, and it's so awesome that we can participate and partake and be his hands, be his feet and be his mouth at this time. So may the Lord find you all useful and available. Amen. I know some, some people go to work. It's fine. But if you are not at work, please come. And let's all participate in the blessings. All the people around us here, you know, let's be able to give them, right? Let's get to the town center. I believe that's it. We're going to the town. And we'll just be giving gifts. I'm just excited, you know. Just say, hey, hi. Come on, would you like, you know, the Lord bless you. Merry Christmas. It's going to think, really? For me? It's going to be so awesome. Please come. And let us take your photos as you yourself, you are bewildered and they are also wondering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is for Saturday on that one. Uh, I'm sure that um, by the time, I mean, that's a tester for, for the whole community on Saturday. Then on Sunday, it will be your turn. It will be my turn. It will be our turn. And it's going to be awesome in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, don't forget that before Saturday, we have the, the children and the youth where is that on, please? Oh, thank you. The youth and children have this special movie nights, movie games, carols, all those things that make them excited. Yeah? And it's free. What else can you ask for? And they're already on holiday. Please do not take any of our children. Don't put them behind closed doors before because you are going to work. Make sure somebody can bring them if you can't. 
Don't put our children behind closed doors because you are not able to come. Make sure you, you know, you liaise with somebody who can bring them if you cannot. I beg you, please, don't let anybody miss out. It's your children and youth. And some of us, you see how I'm dressed. I'm already dressed as a youth. So I think I should be permitted to come in, right? Thank you. I believe I'll be coming. So that's it. So we say, please wear Christmas jumper if you have. If they have. I hope they have. Or at least some colors of green, red, and those kind of jumpers. So that it can be a very wonderful festive atmosphere for them. So that is for those special days. Uh, don't forget that um, our crossover service is also going to be another awesome one. Because the last Sunday is, you know, the last Sunday is the 31st. Yeah? But that night, don't forget we have the crossover service. Isn't it? We have service on that day to just be short. But we do have service on Sunday morning. And Sunday night, we will be here by the grace of God. And we will have that uh, crossover service. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. But we still have our services during the week. One thing I thank God for, we said it's a house of prayer, isn't it? It's a house of prayer. It's a house of worship. It's, it's a house of blessing. It's a house of awesomeness. Awesome, all those things. On Monday, we will still have our prayer on Zoom. You don't have to come out then. And on Friday, can I implore us that you have two more Fridays, I think, before the end of the year. Can we make that prayer time on Zoom, virtual, right? So that we still do it eight to nine. Otherwise, um, yeah, I don't know what else to put in there. I think we can't pray too much. The Lord will help us in Jesus. So I'm saying Monday, tomorrow, the 18th, we have a normal um, prevailing prayer time. And on Friday, we have the corporate prayer same thing happens uh, as the year goes to the end. Praise the Lord. So, but then I must mention our elders forum and coffee morning. Are you excited for coffee morning? Where are the mommies? See, thank God. You see my people. <laughs> they are. You see the thumbs up because it's always a fun time for the elders when they come. And if you have grandmas and grandpas in the house, please bring them. It's always an awesome time. They enjoy it so much. And then we finish with coffee and biscuit. What else can you ask for? So it's always nice. Come along as well. Some of you are on holiday. Come along and see what happens. Hopefully that will make you bring your people from Nigeria or from Ghana or from Zimbabwe. Let them come and have some fun as it is. We don't let the cold deter us. Bring the babies. Bring the children. Right, Grandma? Yeah? Grandpa? They can bring, they can bring the little ones at, from the house. It's all part of what we have uh, as home. So that is on Tuesdays. And 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And God is helping us. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I want to thank God for everyone that's working so hard to making this church look so beautiful. The, the sanctuary keepers. What can we say? You please, can you just bless God for the sanctuary keepers? When you go to the toilet and you find it nice and clean, some people do all the hard work. There's so much that goes on behind, behind the doors that everybody puts their hand to the plow. But for the sanctuary keepers, you don't see them. That's the thing. You don't know who they are, right? They are walking behind the scenes. Uh, like an army. That's how hard they work. I want to thank God for them. There are many more people that are required in all the different um, departments, especially the ushering department now. Can I implore us? You see, when you come in and you find the place in order and somebody ushers you to your seat and you make you nicely sitting down, yes, we want you to be the... We want more people to be the face that you will see as we come in. If the Lord is laying such to you, because we don't want, it's not a frivolous um, assignment. If the Lord is laying such to your heart, please, please let me know. Please see me at the end of the service or any other time. Let the Lord find you useful and usable at this time. It's such a blessing to be useful in the house of the Lord. So we need people in that department. I want to pray that the Lord, is, and if you have a department in your mind, I'm thinking we should have this department as well. Let us know about it because we know that God speaks to all of us and we all hear God. So whatever the Lord lays on your heart, as we go into the new year, let us proceed and God is going to be doing God great and awesome things as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think I'm done here. Hallelujah. Now, talking about uh, departments where people can work, uh, we have a, we actually we have a brother in our midst that uh, is gifted in some DIY thing, you know, he's been away for a long time at this bar, brother. Oni, 
So is 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 he, he went and built his own house in Manchester and Copper. He's been there for how many years? He just <laughs> he was just doing it by himself and he has completed it. So he's back. So so in that department, if if you are gifted in that area, you know, we also have a uh, Daddy Ajalai is not around the church. You know, it's not, you know, it's not here today. But these are people who are good in, in the, not, not, I mean, Daddy Ajala is a, is an engineer, a gas engineer. So, so we have him, we have a Pastor Ajala as the team to oversee the, the, the building. So, uh, so if, if you are gifted in that area, yeah. You are an architect, you are a draftman, you are a surveyor, whatever. Handyman, you know. Yeah. And it, it could be a place for you to learn a little bit of those things. Andy woman. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Uh, somebody like uh, he, uh, I, Daddy Ajala's daughter, you know, there was a day when he came to fix my. You know, no, no, but when he came to fix my boiler. And she came with, with, with his dad and she was doing everything. She was, I, I said, you too. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't believe she's, she's actually good. Where is she? Is she there? He said, she's not, she's not there. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's just good, you know. So, so we can have Andy women too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think the Lord has blessed us so much today. Let's just rise up on our feet. Let's give glory to God. Let's just thank Him. I want us to just, I want you to be free. Just just express your mind to God. Just tell Him what, how you feel. Tell Him what's going on in your mind. You know, you are going to the week. You are going into, and uh, this, 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 this coming week is, is the week we are moving into, into the path of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, and uh, is there anything you want to say? You know, I want you to just be free before your father. Just express your mind to me. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, I love you. I give you all the praise. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before we, before we declare the grace together, we need to recognize those who are coming who came for the first time into our midst. If you are here for the first time, please raise up your hand, greet us, whoever you are. Hallelujah. We have, God bless you. We have somebody there at the back there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the day. Welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome. You are welcome in, in the, the name, name of the Lord. We can see. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Oh, yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord, I am blessed. With the blessings of the Lord, anyone I talk, God must be blessed. I am so blessed. With the blessings of the Lord, with the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Everyone I know, everyone I know, surely must be blessed. Surely must be blessed. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed with the blessings of the Lord. With the blessings of the Lord. Everyone 
Lord God Almighty for what you have been doing in their lives, where they are, and where you are taking them to. Eternal Rock of Ages, you will perfect your work concerning them in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, let your divine hand reposition them where they ought to be, where they should be, and the enemy will not have any, any hand in that in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we go into this week, we go with your blessing, we go with your hands upon our lives, and anything that we touch, surely shall prosper, in the mighty name of Jesus, and all the enemies, they shall fall before us, in the mighty name of Jesus, we triumph over the enemies, in the mighty name of Jesus, and together we say the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely, goodness and mercies shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.